Did you know that the three wise men may have come from distant lands rich in silk, ancient wisdom, and vast deserts? Yes, welcome to the last dispensation. You're living in it. Here's a warning for you. My teeth are slowly going away and I won't be getting my... All right, I'm not having implants. I'm just letting you all know some of my diehards here. I'm getting dentures that snap in. That's what I'm getting. Um, <laughs> it's funny that I'm telling you this. But I've been so self-conscious. I haven't been doing videos because um, they're removing my teeth slowly and I won't be getting those anytime soon. I'm trying to get maybe some temporaries. Everything costs money here in California. Well, everywhere, but it costs a lot of money. So please bear with me. Get all your little, little laughs and giggles out. I don't mind. It's funny. I am chimuelo. I am malacho. Ask the, the Hispanic people. They know what I'm talking about. Today, I want to share with you a fascinating video. I recently watched on the YouTube uh, a video by, and I've, Actually, I've watched several and I've done some research, extensive research. Yes, I really did. I come from a time where we used encyclopedias. Okay, I remember in fifth grade doing research um, on the capitals and I had to do uh, a paper, a literal like a whole paper on a state and the capitals. Did you guys have to do that in fifth grade? I did. And uh, I had to go to the library, which was right around the corner from me because we didn't have encyclopedias. We didn't have the Google, so everything was with that. And I remember sitting there and the librarians knew me every day in the summer because I didn't get good grades in fifth grade, I remember. Um, and then I, I flunked. I redid the fifth grade. My parents made me, and the teacher was on board with it. But then I ended up getting on the honor roll, the principal's honor roll the next year. But my dad made me go to the library my stepdad, um, and the whole summer I was grounded and I had to study and do this paper for summer school on, on the 50 states because I didn't do it right uh, the year before, and I used encyclopedias. So yes, I come from a time of research, real research. I know, and there's probably people older than that said, well, we did it before encyclopedia. <laughs> Don't know how. You had to be really smart. Okay. So what am I saying here? Um, so I've done some extensive research on this and I've come to a conclusion. There's a Dr. Brant Petre, a renowned biblical scholar. And if you don't know already, we're talking about the three wise men because I just did a video on Christ uh, from China. Christ from China, the Chinese Jesus, right? And that was interesting. So watch that. Go watch that. It's entitled Jesus Christ in Ancient China. You will not believe this. Uh, you won't believe this ancient uh, discovery. You won't believe this discovery. Sorry. I'll leave the link. And if I don't leave the link, remind me in the comments section to leave the link, if you would. Okay. So Dr. Brant Petre, a renowned biblical scholar, he, he basically dives deep into the origins of the wise men mentioned in the Gospel of Matthew and their connection to the tradition of the three kings we often hear about during Advent and Christmas. Trust me, okay? Uh, this is a topic you do not want to miss. So if you're watching this and you think you want to stop watching it and go to something else, don't. Do not. You will miss out on something uh, awesome. Because I know you can't tell me that you haven't thought about the three wise men and where they come from. We three kings of orient are bearing gifts we travel afar there's my old man singing all right so that i was playing around there i can sing better than that i used to i used to uh okay so who exactly are the wise men or the magi as they are called in greek text Dr. Petre explains that the term magi comes from the Greek word magos, which means wise man or magician. 
This term has Persian origins and refers to priests in Persia's ancient religion. However, the identity and origin of these magi have been a subject of debate, we know, uh, among scholars, among Latter-day Saint um, leaders. Uh, many of them have had their own opinions, and uh, not just scholars in, for centuries, not just Latter-day Saint scholars, but scholars for centuries, biblical scholars. But it doesn't mean they're magicians, because magician comes from the word magi, which means wise or learned um, could even have meant a uh, spiritual leader or prophet. So it doesn't mean that they were, there's a lot of theories about them being um, mystics or gypsies or things, you know, into the, what they referred to as the paganism or, 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 or they were, uh, or that they were into astrology and things like that. But I was trying my best to make the case that they came from China. I wanted so bad for them to come from China. Um, and they still might have very well have come from, and maybe one of them did from Asia. But remember at this time, uh, the Middle East, the Mediterranean, basically it was described as Asia minor. Okay. So it, it's in a sense, it's part of Asia. So when you try to research that, um, it doesn't quite make sense because it is part of Asia's. The one case for China, though, was that it was Far East. And were there three? Not all the men necessarily came from the same nation or peoples or country. But the more I researched and the more I wanted it to be China, I saw things differently. Yes, during the time of Christ, China was indeed east of Jerusalem. Now, spanning a vast area in East Asia, historical records and maps confirmed that ancient China known for its dynasties, like I mentioned in the other video, such as the Han dynasty during the time of Christ, was situated far to the east of Jerusalem. Now, the Han dynasty and the Qing dynasties, they worshipped Shangdi or knew about Shangdi during the time of Christ. So the Silk Road, I mentioned that at the beginning, it was a major trade route connecting the Roman Empire in China. So this illustrates the eastward position of China relative to Jerusalem, facilitating the exchange of goods, culture, and ideas between these distant regions. So there very well have been a lot of uh, interaction between these two nations. I have still some good evidence that points to China being directly hard east of Israel, which makes a good case that maybe one or some of them or all of them came from there. And these wise men or magi were from China, and that can be built on several points derived from historical text, uh, linguistic analysis, and cultural references. Let's talk about the ancient texts and manuscripts. We're gonna, so we're hitting on China, but that's not what this is about. You're going to see this twist here in a minute so stay close uh so the ancient text translated by brent landau i believe i'm pronouncing his name right l-a-n-d-a-u describes the magi as coming from a land called shir s-h-i-r uh which is located in the extreme east of the world They're like extreme east and the scriptures say that the that the magi came from the from the east like direct hard east at the shore of the great ocean. Landau suggests that sure could be a reference to China as it is described as a place where silk comes from, aligning with ancient references to China as the land of silk. The linguistic and cultural references, the term magi in Syriac means to pray in silence. Interesting which does not directly relate to magicians or astrologers, but could imply a mystical or religious group. This aligns with the idea of a learned and spiritual group from the East, such as those found in ancient China. Historical Chinese records, such as those from the Han Dynasty, mention significant astronomical events around the time of Christ's birth. 
Remember Shangdi, including a comet that burned for about 70 days in, in 5 BC. Now, could this comet have been uh, misinterpreted? Maybe it, that was the star that guided the Magi, suggesting that uh, Chinese astronomers might have been aware of the influence by this event. Or let's not even say astronomers. Let's just say spiritual leaders, prophets, maybe. The children of Israel uh, could have been in China. I've mentioned that before. Um, think about the brother of Jared. Uh, Hugh Nibley says that he believed that the brother of Jared and the Jaredites were actually from Asia. So could there be a remnant of those people that were believers? And it goes on and on and on, right? Uh, you can speculate forever. But let's talk about the geographical and trade connections with China. So the Silk Road, I mentioned, was a major trade route connecting China with the Middle East and beyond. This route would have facilitated the movement of goods, ideas, and people, making it plausible that learned men from China could have traveled to Judea. Extreme East, like I said before, descriptions of the Magi coming from the extreme East align geographically with China, which is far east of Jerusalem and also far east from Bethlehem. Scholarly interpretations, Brent Landau's analysis. This is interesting. Landau's detailed analysis of the revelation of the Magi text supports the idea that the Magi could have been from China. He points out that the text's references to Shir, S-H-I-R, and the association with silk strongly suggest a Chinese origin. Here's the cultural depictions. Some scholars and religious traditions have speculated that the Magi could have come from various Eastern regions, including China, based on their knowledge of astronomy and the significance of the star they followed. I'm not a big proponent of believing in the astrology or the astronomy because where are the spiritual components there? Uh, astrology wasn't so much uh, what it is today. Um, astronomy and astrology were almost synonymous. Uh, they were the scientists of the time. Uh, it doesn't mean that there weren't mystics. And Hugh Nibley talks about the Gnostics uh, many times. But I honestly believe that these wise men were prophets. And I'll, t I'll get into that in a minute. So the argument that the three wise men were from China is supported by ancient texts, definitely, like the revelation of the Magi, linguistic and natural references, historical Chinese records of astronomical events, and the geographical context of the Silk Road. Don't go away because that's not really what this is about. I wanted it to be China. And I'm not saying it isn't. I haven't like come up with some uh, major revelation or something. But all of these elements together create, and I mean, you can't, there's no doubt it creates a very compelling uh, case for the Chinese origin of the three wise men or the Magi. So that's what I want to say about China. The three wise men, the Magi, uh, you could call them the three kings. Three kings almost sounds like the two olive branches or the two sticks, the two candles. They have different names as well. They're mentioned in texts outside of uh, biblical writings, including the apocryphal writings and interpretations within the context of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. And let me tell you, there are texts that portray the Magi as descendants of Seth, uh, Adam, and Eve's third son, and includes a narrative where Christ appears to them as a star child. Sound like the brother of Jared, even? Interesting. Here are some speculative theories, but interesting nonetheless. What does the Book of Mormon say about the wise men? Well, 
Book of Mormon doesn't explicitly mention the three wise men. It does provide context that can be interpreted to support their story. Uh, for example, the Book of Mormon describes a new star appearing at the time of Christ's birth. That aligns, brothers and sisters, with the star followed by the Magi in the Bible. Some LDS scholars suggest that the wise men could have been influenced by teachings from Lehi and Nephi who traveled through Arabia and could have shared prophecies about the Messiah. Some LDS interpretations propose that the wise men could have been Nephites or Lamanites. I kid you not. Uh, these are some scholars' ideas. This draws on the idea that Nephi, the son of Helaman, had departed from the land of Zarahemla around the time of Christ's birth, as mentioned in 3rd Nephi chapter 1, verse 2. That is a huge, huge possibility, brothers and sisters. I actually don't feel like that is as speculative as some think. I believe that ocean travel was something that's been going on since the beginning of time. I do not believe that uh, even during the time that people thought the earth was flat, which wasn't everyone, uh, that this was a thing. We traveled. No one sprung from the roots of the ground that they were born in. No people, no civilization sprung automatically from the ground that their ancestors were born in. Did I say that right? Did that make sense to y'all? I hope so. Don't look at my teeth. I am not Chimuelo. Do not call me Chimuelo. Here are some medieval Christian traditions. These traditions often depict the Magi as kings from different regions, including Europe even Africa, and we've discussed Asia already, based on interpretations of biblical prophecies and medieval art. The three wise men are mentioned in various apocryphal texts. Do not go away. I'm going to get into who I think they are, who I think they might be. Another interpretation is that the Magi were from Babylon. Uh, as suggested by scholars like Jerome and Augustine. Babylon, located, and we all know where Babylon is, e located east, predominantly Iraq, east of Jerusalem. This was also a center of learning and wisdom. What does the Bible dictionary have to say about it? Well, it suggests that the wise men were likely representatives of a branch of the Lord's people from the east of Palestine. I know that Hugh Nibley says that a lot, possibly indicating a connection to Jewish communities in Arabia or even Persia. Now, I am starting to get close to where I came up with my conclusion, and I will go on. The text names the Magi as Melchon of Persia, Gaspar of India, and Balthazar of Arabia. Marco Polo reported that the Magi set out from Saba in Persia, where their tombs were still visited in this day. This aligns with the traditional names of the Magi, Gaspar, Melchor, and Balthazar. But here we go. You ready for the roller coaster ride here, folks? Here we go. Dr. Petre presents a compelling case that the Magi were actually from Arabia. He points to the prophecy in Isaiah chapter 60, verse 6, which speaks of camels from Midian and Ephah. I'm going to tell you guys something. If you are a regular, it's hard for me to pronounce certain things right now. To use my Fs, I have to use the bottom of my lip. So bear with me, folks. I will have a grill. I will have a beautiful grill in the future. So, camels from Midian to Epha and the people from Sheba bringing gold and incense. Where was gold and incense at the time? This aligns perfectly with the gifts of the Magi brought to Jesus, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Additionally, Psalm 72.10 mentions kings from Sheba bringing gifts. 
further supporting the Arabian origin theory. And I'll, so I think, so with all my modern research, modern way of researching things, which doesn't take you as long as the old, and might even take you longer because Google has a lot of misinformation and disinformation. But Arabia came up with, uh, there are some stronger evidences of why I believe Arabia is the key. And here we go. This is strong. Here's why I believe the theory. Let's bring in some insights from Latter-day Saint leaders and scholars. Bruce R. McConkie, in his doctrinal New Testament commentary, um, he suggests that the wise men were true prophets, righteous individuals to whom deity re revealed the birth of the Messiah. The LDS Bible Dictionary also indicates that the wise men were likely representatives of a branch of the Lord's people from the east of Palestine. So they were of the lost 10 tribes of Israel. So here's the big kicker, brothers and sisters. The big kicker is I believe there's a type and a shadow here. And this made a lot of sense to me. I believe that, uh, that Hugh Nibley's right about them being Arabic or Arabian. Uh, and I believe that this doctor here, Dr. Brant Petray, is also correct. There's a type and a shadow here. Pay attention to this. This is amazing. It's going to knock your socks off. Marker. It's going to knock your socks off. Put that in the middle. Okay. Forever you're going to drop that. In the Gospel of Matthew, the wise men are specifically described in chapter 2, verse 1, when it says this. When Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? Now, the Greek word there for wise men is magoi. We get the English word magician from that word, and it, it literally means the wise men. I mean, so that's a very good translation. The question, though, is, well, who are they, and what does it mean that they came from the east, right? Where is the east, and, and who are these men? So, over the history of Christianity, three interpretations have been forwarded. This is one of those issues that there are a diversity of opinions about. Uh, some ancient Christian writers, such as Clint of Alexandria, St. John Chrysostom, uh, Leo the Great, and Cyril of Jerusalem said that the wise men were from Persia. That was one interpretation. Persia was very well known in antiquity for its wisdom and its learning and its knowledge. Uh, a, no a second interpretation is that the wise men from the east are actually Babylonians, that they're from Babylon, because Babylon is to the east of the Holy Land, uh, and people such as Jerome and Augustine and the medieval Glossa Ornaria, a kind of medieval study Bible, uh, in the Catholic tradition, said, took the position that the wise men were from Babylon. The third interpretive option, and the one that I think is actually probably the strongest possibility, is that when Ma Matthew mentions the wise men from the east, he's actually talking about men from Arabia, that the east means Arabia. Uh, this position is ancient as well. Justin Martyr, Tertullian in the third century, Cyprian of Carthage, and Epiphanius in the fourth century, a number of church fathers argued that the wise men from the east were from Arabia. And here are some reasons to think that that might be the best interpretation. First, whenever Matthew gives you this account of Jesus' infancy, he appears to be alluding to an Old Testament prophecy in the book of Isaiah, chapter 60, verse 6. If you go back to Isaiah 60, verse 6, we read these words. It describes the new Jerusalem, the age of salvation, and it says, A multitude of camels shall cover you, young camels of Midian and Ephah, and all those from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and frankincense and proclaim the praise of the Lord. So if you recall, in Matthew's Gospel, it says that the wise men brought gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And many commentators have suggested that Matthew's deliberately alluding to the book of Isaiah, chapter 60, and this prophecy of the non-Israelite kings bringing gold and frankincense to Jerusalem. Now, if that's right, it's really important because Sheba, which is Matthew describes them as, from being from Sheba, was a part of the territory of Midian and Ephah, and it consisted of Arabians, who were the descendants of Abraham's wife, Keturah, in the book of Genesis. So, in other words, the link between Isaiah 60 and Matthew chapter 1 points us to Sheba, to the territory of Arabia, and the gifts of gold and frankincense coming from that territory. A second element here uh, is actually uh, from Psalm 72. 
Psalm 72 describes uh, King Solomon, and it kind of depicts a future king, a kind of messianic Solomon, a new Solomon, and it too describes Gentile kings bowing down to the Israelite king. And these Gentile kings bring him gold from, of all places, Sheba. Listen, in this psalm, it says this about the king. It says, long may he live, and may gold of Sheba be given to him. So there we have another connection with Sheba, right? This gold from the east, from Arabia, being given to him as a gift. But what's interesting in light of Matthew's gospel is not only is gold from Sheba given to him, but the kings of Sheba are described as bowing down before him, just like the wise men bow down before Jesus in the gospel of Matthew. So in Psalm uh, 72, verse 10, it says, May the kings of Sheba bring gifts, and may all kings fall down before him, and all nations serve him. All right, so other scholars have suggested then that what Matthew is uh, doing is alluding not just to Isaiah 60, but to Psalm 72, and to the depiction of gold from Sheba, Arabia, being brought to the future king, the new Solomon, the Messiah, in other words. Um, and this is interesting for two reasons. First, if that's correct, then Matthew clearly associates the wise men from the east with uh, the territory of Sheba, with Arabia, uh, and the gold that is being brought to Jesus as a kind of fulfillment of that prophecy. But it's also interesting because it's precisely that psalm, Psalm 72, which leads to the tradition of we three kings, right? Because Matthew never says that the wise men are kings. They're just called Magoi, not wise men from the east. Um, it's the fusing of Matthew's account with the Old Testament psalm about these kings bringing gold from Sheba that leads to the tradition that these wise men weren't just counselors or advisors to kings, but they, they were actually kings themselves, right? And then the, the tradition of there being three kings is derived from the three gifts, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. It's an inference from the text that developed in the course of time in the centuries of later tradition. There are lots of oral traditions of Jewish communities existing in Yemen up until the 20th century, claiming ancestry from Israelite immigrants and, and during biblical times. Origins of debate, right? But most scholars agree that, and I agree, that at least some of the Israelite tribes did migrate and settle in parts of Arabia, no doubt, after the ancient kingdoms of Israel and Judah fell and after they were exiled to, uh, to the Assyrians. So, so there's no doubt that there were many Jewish communities in the region, but no doubt Israelite tribes, this is going on longer than I thought it would. I am sorry. Please stay. This is awesome, rich. This is rich nutrients. This video might be long, but you got to stay. So ancient kingdoms existing around Arabia, their descendants remained until the rise of Islam and beyond, no doubt. And we're getting closer. <clears throat> Our late Hugh Nibley, who is my brother's favorite, my brother likes Hugh Nibley and Truman G. Madsen. I do too. So Hugh Nibley also weighed in on this topic. Nibley suggested that the Magi could have been Arabs, which was a specialized skill among ancient Arab caravaneers. This aligns with the idea that the Magi followed a star to find the Christ child. Interestingly, the Book of Mormon provides additional context in 3 Nephi, again, chapter 1, verse 21. It mentions a new star appearing at the time of Christ's birth, which could be the, name, the, the same star the Magi followed this connection between the Bible and the Book of Mormon enriches our understanding of the wise men's journey. So I think they're either from, they could be from more than one place. They could either be from America during Book of Mormon times, maybe one of them from America. Was there really three or more or from Arabia? And that's what I'm going with. But if they were from America, why would they say the East? Because maybe eventually they came from the East. Uh, because America is the West. So to sum it all up, while the exact origin of the wise men remains a mystery, the evidence points strongly towards Arabia. Their journey guided by a star and their gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh fulfill ancient prophecies and highlight the significance of Christ's birth. I hope you found this exploration as fascinating as I did because it was an exploration, uh, to say the least. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ding the bell for notifications. Uh,
so you never miss an update. And please share your thoughts in the comment section down below. Do not call me Chimuelo. If you'd like to support the program, you can contribute via Venmo, Cash App, or PayPal. We also have products that I get a percentage of, Super Chats, and YouTube memberships that all help keep the program running. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.